Hey everyone, it's Viv, and welcome to another Redrawing Old Art video. This time I'm going with this one, which you can see in the corner of this character I made when I was like 12. A lot of these are from that sort of era. This one, I decided to give her the name Gwen, because that has associations with the color white and snow and stuff, and that was the sort of vibe I got off of this character. In the original, she's got this very sad expression as kind of like the main feature, and so I wanted to make sure that was included and lean into that sort of vibe of the sort of wistful, sad feeling. So I really wanted to spend a lot of time making sure this face looked just the way I wanted it to. I had some trouble with the shoulders and body proportions with this one, but I got there eventually. You'll also notice that my Photoshop interface is purple, which is really fun. I was able to do that by following a script that I will link to in the description. It's really cool, you can just go in and edit the colors. Again, I did a preliminary sketch for this one with just a basic blocking out of where I wanted the colors to be. And unfortunately, I ended up liking the pose in the original better than my final drawing, so that kind of sucks. But you know, it is what it is. In the original, her hair is very like wavy and spiked out, so I tried to keep that sort of vibe while making it look more realistic. I also took these circular gemstones on her necklace and belt thing and kind of turned that into a recurring pattern, so I put it on all these little metal bits and made it into more of a snowflake pattern. Her dress, I was kind of inspired by Zelda's white dress look in Breath of the Wild, like I made a lot of it similar to that sort of shape. And then with these blue sleeve things, I decided to turn them into like a scarf that she draped around her shoulders because I felt like that made the outfit a little more dynamic. I spent a long time getting all the folds to look right in the scarf and the skirt to make it look like it was blowing in the wind and also figuring out what length to put these legs at was also a struggle. Also, there were no shoes in the original, so I was free to do whatever I wanted, so I kind of made them follow that same motif with the snowflake design and the silver. I do kind of wish I had made the pose in this one a little more interesting, because she's kind of just standing there, but I think it works because it conveys this sense of stillness and inactivity and I think this is a person who's at a point of unsureness, that's not a word, uncertainty in her life and she doesn't know what she wants to do next so she's taking a moment to contemplate it. I really love working with facial expressions, like drawing someone with a sad face is a nice change because usually I'm drawing people in happy situations. Oh, and hair, I love inking hair. It's so much fun, especially when it's all like wispy like this. It's so fun. This character, I imagine like this outfit is her formal outfit for some sort of party and normally she would wear something a bit more casual, but she's dressed up in this specific drawing. So who knows, later I might do another drawing of what her like regular outfit would be. I'm already picturing her as this kind of serious adventurer type who's very stoic but has a lot of internal conflict going on that she doesn't know what to do about. I think I must have designed this somewhere on like the coattails of my frozen obsession that every child in the 2000s had because I can definitely sense the lingering Elsa vibes on this. I don't usually work with color palettes this like monochromatic, so this was kind of fun for me. You know, usually I go very bright and contrasting and wild with the colors, but this time I kind of just had white and blue to work with, and it turned out really good. This is one of those designs I didn't change much from the original because, first of all, it's not that complicated, so there wasn't really much to change, but also I liked it a lot, and so I thought I could work with a lot of the stuff that was already there. I mostly just added stuff. But yeah, I'm glad to be back making these videos again because they're fun. They're not too tricky to 
edit and they're easy to film and record so I can get them out pretty quickly if I want to so hope I can get more of these done in a better <laughs> work ethic because waiting four months in between uploads is probably not the best. <laughs> it does kind of suck that I have to use royalty free music for all of the background stuff like I would much rather put stuff that I actually enjoy but uh, you know it's, it is what it is. I remember some of my old Steven Universe videos on this channel I used music from the show as the background and they all got copyright claimed so fast. Man, I miss my Steven Universe phase. I remember having so much fun. It got me to create so much. Like, I was making characters and designs so often. Like, say what you will about the writing of that show, but all the designs and the, like, environments and backgrounds and characters, they all looked so beautiful. Huh, bare feet is, like, the one thing I hate inking the most. Like, toes are so annoying and I can never get them to like be the right size or like face the right direction. It's it's just so annoying. But now that's over and we're finally gonna be on to the good part which is the coloring. I have this nice little auto action set up where I just select all the stuff around it and then just it automatically fills the whole thing in with a mask so I can't color outside the line. But yeah, I can't tell you how many drawings that I have abandoned because I hated the inking stage so much and wanted to just get to the coloring. So I've actually started doing a few drawings lately that have just been sketch with color under it because I just didn't want to deal with ink. And like, that works when you don't need it to look super professional, but when you do, like, line art is kind of the only way to do it. Like, even lineless art, which can look really cool sometimes, still is even more annoying than line art to me, so there's not really a winning situation there. I decided to use these parallel gradients thing that go darker as they get down for the colors, which uh, regrettably I did get the inspiration for from Genshin Impact, which is a whole can of worms I'm not gonna open right now, but basically that game has made me pretty angry on multiple occasions, but one thing I do like about it is certain aspects of the character design style and one of those is making their designs kind of look like gradients like a character will have mostly light colors on the top half of their design and mostly dark on the bottom and it'll look really cool like that but yeah that's all i'm gonna say about the unspoken game so onto my new shading style i've found a way to make my shading brush a little bit softer so now i have a more airbrushed kind of look without it being actual airbrushing because airbrushing is really annoying. <laughs> well, okay, airbrushing's not that bad, but this sort of smudge tool method is what my hands are used to, so it's easier and faster for me. But yeah, I'm shading with just a straight up dark blue this time, and it is hard for me to kind of reconcile that with the skin tone since, you know, skins are always shades of orange and I'm like, ah, it's drowning out the color! But no, that's that's how it's supposed to look. You want this piece to have a kind of blue, gray, sad mood, so it's supposed to drown out the color. Just, just, it's chill, you're fine. That's something I'm definitely having trouble teaching myself with the colors is that, like, not every color has to be jumping out at you with brightness and it's okay for some of them to fade into the background. But I'm really enjoying this new soft shading style. You can see me fumbling with the arm. <laughs> like this was what I had been trying to do for a while with my shading, but I had been using a rougher brush and I didn't know how to use a smoother one. So I, it had just ended up looking a little bit chalky and rough when I didn't really want it to be. But now I found a soft one that doesn't have that rough texture to it and it is going super well and I'm really happy with it. So yay! It's cool how much of a trance I go into when I'm drawing. Like nothing else exists beyond my laptop and my pen and like not even. I can't even see the medium. I'm just in the art. I am the art. <laughs> But yeah, that's the upside to ADHD is that when you focus, you focus and just get everything done super quickly. Like, my friends will comment that, like, 
I draw so fast. Like, I'll pump out a sketch in like 10 minutes and they'll be like, how did you do that? So I don't even really remember doing most of this. Like, it was just a blur in my brain of focus and inspiration. <laughs> but back to colors, I generally turned the whole tone of this piece a little on the cooler side because I really wanted it to invoke that like snow imagery and have much more of a cold, icy feel to it. So even in the original, they, the blues have a little bit of a teal to them and I just decided, nope, we're going full frosty blue. Here's another nice use of my double shading layers is that I have one layer for like the individual folds in the top part of her dress and then I have one for the curvature. And like my first layer on the hair was just about like the form and then this one is going in with all the little details to make it look like hair. I like keeping things subtle in my art lately and instead of having all these hard shapes and hard shadows. I had so much fun with the folds on this skirt. I love shading flowy skirts and stuff so much. Like it's just so fun to see like what goes in front of where, what goes behind and what f like floofs out and what goes and then in a couple seconds here, Photoshop crashes and I lose all my progress on the shirt skating. The shirt skating. The skirt shading. <laughs> Good old Photoshop, always giving me plenty of horror stories. One time I had almost, there it is. <laughs> One time I had almost finished a drawing I was doing and then something happened and my entire laptop crashed and then when I opened the thing back up again, it was still on just the line art stage. I was so pissed. Oh, my beautiful cat just scratched the crap out of me and there's scratch marks all over my arm. Jesus. Well, those will be there for two weeks. Yay! <laughs> ah, the joy of motherhood. <laughs> I, I love him very much. He is the best boy. Anyway, I feel like I made pretty flawless of a recovery on the shading. <laughs> you can barely even tell that I lost my progress. I wonder if anyone would watch like one of those competition shows, but for artists, so like a cooking show. But instead of, oh my god, I burnt the cookies in the oven, it's, oh my god, Photoshop crashed on me and I had the entire project done. <laughs> I'd watch that. I would totally watch that. And here's where the magic happens on the shading, is when I start adding that second layer and it gives this really 3D effect to the folds. And, but you know, it doesn't really all start coming together until I get that lighting layer in. That's why it's important to have all these little steps at the end, is that even if they don't take that long or you don't think they really matter, when you look at a comparison of like with and without them, it makes a huge difference. Especially my colored line art, which I've been doing more of lately. A piece seriously has so much of a different vibe depending on whether the line art is black or colored. Probably my favorite style is black line art around the edges and colored on the internal pieces, but that is like one of the more complicated ones and usually I like doing more simple. So I tend to go for one or the other rather than the combination. Plus that style usually ends up looking more on the cutesy side, and while I love that kind of art, a lot of the time it's not what I'm going for in that hot moment. But here we go, we're on to lighting, and I really have this fun method of doing it now where I just like smudge a little white in there and then just blend it out until you can't really tell it's there unless you're looking. It's fun because you don't have to be very precise about it, like it's alright if it doesn't look 100% realistic, but it still gives this nice shimmer to everything. I'm really happy with how the skirt and scarf combo ended up looking with this one. I then realized here that I forgot to shade the bottom foot thing, so I quickly went back and did that, and then it was on to the colored line art. This is another thing that I have an auto action for, so I can just set up this array really quickly that 
lets me just put in whatever color is beneath it without having to individually pick the color for the line art every single time. It saves so much time and I probably wouldn't have ever started doing art this way if I didn't figure out how to do that. And I mostly just learned all this stuff on my own. Like I had heard about actions from my digital art class in seventh grade, but I had never really tried to use them until like four years later. So this sort of profession really rewards just like trying shit out and seeing what it does. Like for anyone who's learning Photoshop, that's what I'd recommend is just like experiment, figure stuff out just by seeing the buttons and being like, ooh, I wonder what that does. I'll just try it. Like that's how I learned most of what I know about this program is just experimenting. And so, yeah, that's how I was able to develop from, you know, drawing A to this one I'm working on. It's seriously so cool to be doing this series and seeing how far I've come. Like, it's a big, like, honestly, ego stroke for me to be redrawing all this childhood stuff because it's all like, look how good I am, look how much I improved. Trust me, you can never feel bad about your art if you're redrawing something you did years ago. It is always going to look better. So here, I'm just adding in a simple background, just some swirlies to indicate the wind direction and a sort of cliffside that she could be standing on. And just adding some filters, and here we are. This is the finished drawing. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you next time. Bye!